Planned Parenthood understands that abortion stigma can make you feel isolated and scared. Listening to one another is how we build strong and supportive communities. That's why Planned Parenthood is sharing stories of resilience and hope from real people who've had abortions. Let's help create a world where everyone can get the care they need. Learn more at PlannedParenthood.com slash EndStigma. You're ready for a comeback. And with Purdue Global, you can do more than take classes. You can take charge of your story, of your career, of your life. Earn a degree you can be proud of and get an education employers respect. It's time, your time, not just to go back to school, but to come back and move forward with Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Start your comeback at purdueglobal.edu. Hello, from Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. We're celebrating Pride Month with icons, supreme queens of queer culture. Some are household names. Others are a little more behind the scenes. All have defied social norms and influenced generations of people to be unapologetically themselves. Today, we're talking about a legend of Formula One racing, the most successful female driver in F1 history. She was known on and off the track for living her life the way she wanted it to go. Let's talk about Lella Lombardi. Maria Grazia Lombardi was born in Frugarolo, Italy, in March of 1941. She grew up in a working-class family and had a strong sense of self from the start. From a young age, she knew she was a lesbian, and she knew she wanted to get on the racetrack. Formula One was one of the few sports with no gender divide. Women drivers, though there were very few, raced alongside men as team members and adversaries. Lella saved up her money driving the family's butcher shop delivery van. Soon, she upgraded her ride to a shiny racing car she debuted in the 1965 Formula Monza. At first, Lella's father wasn't sure of his daughter's dedication to the sport. But just a few years into her career, Lella had won four of the 10 Formula 850 races, tackled a championship race, and beat out some of Italy's most promising racers in a dead heat. The old boys' club motorsport world started to take notice. In 1974, Lella raced a Maddish 850 at Sandown Park against Macho racers Max Stewart and Big Rev Kevin Bartlett. In the race, Lella tied Stewart for the fastest lap and finished third by only two seconds, earning the other driver's respect along the way. That same year, Lella attracted the attention of the Heads of Brands Hatch, a central hub for European Grand Prix racing. She joined several series, impressing the crowds and team members alike with her management of Lola T330s. Bigger cars, bigger motors, nothing faced Lella. In 1975, Lella entered her first whole season as an F1 racer. In doing so, she became only the second woman to ever qualify for an F1 race, and the first since 1958. Disappointingly, Lella encountered fuel system issues and had to retire from the race. But her star was on the rise. She was a bullet on the track. She consistently finished just a few places behind future world champions. She had the skills to cement her place as one of the best drivers of the era. Lella's second F1 race was at the Spanish Grand Prix in Barcelona in 1975. She was off to a strong start, holding sixth place. She was poised to become the only woman to ever score a world championship point. Then suddenly, 29 laps in, far in front of Lella, the lead car lost its rear wing. The vehicle crashed into the crowd, tragically killing several onlookers. The 1975 Grand Prix would go down in infamy. The race was cut early, and as a result, Lella was awarded only half a point. Even still, that half point made her the only woman to score in a world championship, a record she still holds to this day. From Barcelona, Lella continued to race, 
She made a total of 10 Grand Prix starts that year and two more the following. Lella raced at Le Mans four times, a grueling 24-hour endurance race where two drivers alternate. In 1976, Lella, alongside another female driver, Christine Dacremont, finished second in their class. Lella was a crowd favorite. She was well-loved for her blunt demeanor and camaraderie. When she rode on a team, she focused on the team's overall showing and never let her own star power get in the way. When reporters asked Lella what it was like to handle such big cars, Lella simply replied, I don't have to carry it, I just have to drive it. Throughout her career, Lella was also open about her long-term relationship with her partner, Fiorenza. Lella retired from racing in 1988, but not from her love of cars. The next year, she opened her own racing team, Lombardi Auto Sport. Just a few years later, in March of 1992, Lella died from breast cancer. She was 50 years old. All month, we're talking about icons. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. Talk to you tomorrow. Planned Parenthood fights every day so all people can get the care and education they need to live full, healthy lives. That means having the freedom to control your own body and make decisions for your future, including whether to have an abortion. Abortion storytellers are important. Their powerful narratives, each as unique as they are, reject silence and shame. That's why Planned Parenthood is building a platform to share stories, busting stigma and breaking down barriers to essential health care, one voice at a time. Together, we can help create a future where all people are free to make their own decisions, no matter what. Learn more at plannedparenthood.com slash end stigma. No one likes to talk about money. Am I saving enough? Can I buy a house? Am I paying too much in taxes? Will I be able to retire? What if you could unlock insights about your finances in less than five minutes with a clear picture of where you stand today and where your money can work harder? Now you can. Visit facet.com to take the free quiz and get your financial wellness score today. That's F A C E T.com. This ad is sponsored by Facet. Facet Wealth Incorporated is an SEC registered investment advisor. This is not an offer to buy or sell securities, nor is it investment, legal, or tax advice. Are you looking to take the next step in your career? Maybe you want to learn new skills, break into a different industry, or just make more money. Marymount University's graduate degrees help you find your next. With approachable, hardworking professors actively networking in their fields, they will set you up for whatever your next may be. Customize your degree to fit your needs and walk away with connections in your field. Marymount University Graduate School, preparing you for what's next. Check them out at marymount.edu grad for more information.